Hi, I'm Tim Van Melgen. Um, today I'd like to talk to you about the Altimeter 2. Now the Altimeter 2 is a little device that measures the altitude of the rocket plus it measures the speed of the rocket. Um, we've been selling the Altimeter 1 and we're going to continue to sell the Altimeter 1 because the Altimeter 1 is cheaper and if you need to do um, experiments like measuring the height of a balloon or a kite, the Altimeter 1 will work really well for that. But if you're measuring speed in a rocket, you have to use the Altimeter 2. Um, unfortunately, the Altimeter 2 doesn't work in kites or in uh, balloons or attached to birds or in model airplanes. It only works in model rockets. And the reason for that is it's looking for a specific trajectory. And if it doesn't look like a rocket trajectory, it doesn't know what to do with it. So Altimeter 2 can only be used with model rockets. So I wanted to make that clear right off the top because I know there's a lot of you out there watching this that want to put it on kites and things like that. Now, when you first turn the Altimeter 2 on, um, it's going to display um, the version number of the of the software that's installed on it, and that's so that we can track, you know, upgrades to it. Um, and then it will alternate back and forth between speed and altitude. So right now it's showing 130 miles per hour and 374 feet. Now, what you're going to want to do is to create a data sheet. Now, if you don't have a data sheet, um, if you go to the Apogee Components website, um, I've created one there for you that lists all the parameters that the Altimeter 2 records. Because it doesn't just record altitude and speed, um, it records 10 different things. So you're going to have to write them down um, because you can't download this into a computer. So this data sheet, and you can download this free from the Apogee Components website on the Altimeter 2 page. Um, and it has spots for everything that you're going to write down. So, for example, so this is the uh, Apogee Apprentice rocket. And you can see how it's, uh, the altimeter 2 is just attached to it. It's just attached to the base of the nose cone by a clip. So, on my data sheet, I'll probably write down Apprentice rocket. And the motor used, let's say that was a B64. Now, you're going to want to know which motor you, you use because one of the parameters is burn time and that depends on the motor you're using and that's why I'm going to write it down. Um, and then my top speed again was 130 miles per hour and my, uh, my apogee was 374 feet. It just alternates back and forth and I wrote these in the wrong wrong spots so I got little arrows <laughs> okay so now how do you get the other data well it's really simple to use um, just like on the altimeter uh, uh, altimeter one you just press and hold down the button and instead of zeroing it out it's going to say data and when it says data you let go um, and then it's going to cycle through and the first one was burn time and then peak acceleration and I'm writing these down and peak acceleration is in G's Average acceleration is 9.2 G's. Um, the coast to apogee is 5.0. The apogee to ejection was minus 0.4. Um, the ejection altitude is 366 feet. And the descent speed, 11 miles per hour. And the duration of the flight was 27.3 seconds, 27.3 seconds. Okay, so I wrote that down. Um, and so this is for the first flight. And let me go over these numbers and, and explain what they mean. Okay, so uh, we did apogee altitude and the top speed already. Pretty simple. Um, the peak acceleration, this is when the rocket takes off, it's accelerating. And it's going to hit its peak acceleration pretty close right after liftoff. Um, acceleration is the change in speed. So this had a peak acceleration of 
22.1 G's. So that's basically the rocket. If you were riding inside this rocket, you would feel 22.1 times heavier than you already are. So if you weighed 100 pounds, man, you'd feel like you were 2,000 pounds heavier. Um, or thereabouts, you know what I mean. The average acceleration, so this is now the rocket, this is over the total burn time. Um, the average G load is 9.2 Gs. Our burn time on this was 0.6 seconds, so that's approximately what a B6 is. Um, and you can go to the engine tables on the Apogee website and find out the exact burn time is. Um, the coast to Apogee. Now as the rocket burns out, and I got the boost, I got a little, little picture down here so you can actually show this to your friends and explain it to them. Um, the coast to Apogee is the time from burnout to when it hits its peak altitude. And that's um, in seconds. So that's kind of like your delay time. So this was a, um, a four second a B64. Um, and this one got to Apogee in five seconds. Um, so actually what happened was the the motor fired off the ejection charge early before it got to Apogee. And that's what this minus 0.4 is. Basically, it, it, it took 0.4 seconds from, from the ejection to Apogee. So basically, the rocket was going up, dragging the parachute behind it, still going upwards until the parachute had enough time to slow it down and then start its descent. Um, the ejection altitude was 366 feet, so you know exactly when you're ejecting. Um, the descent speed, so this is uh, the size of our parachute is going to determine our descent speed. So if we want a slower descent speed, we'll use a bigger parachute. If we want a faster one, we'll use a smaller parachute, obviously. And then our total um, duration. Duration is measured from liftoff to when the rocket touches back down to the ground. Um, and so this one had uh, 27.3 seconds. So this Altimeter 2 can be really useful in science fair projects and things like um, the TARC competition, uh, where they have to get the rocket up and back down in a certain amount of time. Um, typically, they've been doing it with stopwatches. Now you can actually confirm it with the altimeter 2. Um, and you can also use this to find out your descent speed of your rocket as it's coming down, because that's really important also in the TARC competition. Um, and so now for the next flight to, um, to get it ready, what I'll do is I'll zero it out. So I'll just hold down the, the red button again until I get four zeros. Okay, I got four zeros. I went past data until I got four zeros. And now you can see it's flashing zero across the screen. Um, now what it's doing is it's waiting for the rocket to take off. Um, so the only thing you really have to do your rocket, like on this one here, is to have vent holes. Now the vent holes are for the pressure sensor on board the altimeter 2. Also on board is an accelerometer, and this is what measures how fast the rocket's going. It actually has a three-axis accelerometer. What does that mean? Um, basically, it measures acceleration in three coordinates. Obviously, up-down is one of the coordinates. Um, another coordinate is in and out, so that's um, maybe up range and down range. And then you have this direction, that's cross range. So as the rocket takes off, and if it's going this way on a diagonal, it's measuring acceleration that way, that way, and that way. So it's measuring three of them, it integrates it all, and it does all the work for you. So you don't have to mount the altimeter on a hard board like you do on a lot of the other rocket electronics that have accelerometers on board. Because it's measuring three of them, it figures it out all by itself. So when it's flashing zeros, that's the accelerometer inside waiting to detect launch. And it detects launch. It doesn't use the pressure sensor to detect launch. So when it measure, when it sees a, sus a sustained G acceleration, which means that it's taking off, um, it starts recording. Um, and then it's looking for these various events during the flight. And if it doesn't see them, then it knows it's not in a rocket. And then it's going to give you, uh, basically, it's going to give you dashes across all of them. So um, if your ejection altitude, um, if you were trying to test this on the ground and you somehow tricked it, which is pretty hard to do, 
um, it would give you dash, 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 four dashes on your data sheet. So that basically tells you that some, something got tricked. Um, but it is really hard to trick this thing. Um, you can wiggle it around like this, and you can see it's still flashing its four zeros. Um, you, could, you can actually swing test this, but that's only going to give you a G load in one direction. And, and typically that might cause it to tr trigger, but typically it won't. Um, it really needs to go in a rocket. And that's really the only way to find out if it's actually working right is just, you know, put it in a small rocket, fly it, and if you get data back, it's working. Um, and then it uses the pressure sensors to measure the altitude, the final apogee and ejection. Um, and it also uses the, the pressure sensors to measure the duration because of what it's looking for is when, uh, when it stops descending, it assumes it's on the ground and that's when it shuts itself off. Um, now, it won't actually shut itself off. It means it just stops recording there. It shuts itself off after an hour to conserve battery. And like the altimeter one, um, it's got a port here on the side to plug it into your computer and that's strictly for charging only. When you charge it up, the internal battery, you'll get a red light. Uh, when it's charging, when it's fully charged, the red light turns to green. So you know when your rocket, uh, your altimeter two is ready to go. And it also, like the altimeter one, has a little battery indicator on it so that if you're out there on the field and you see that battery indicator come up, that means you got about an hour left before you need to recharge it. So get your flight off quickly. Um, so that's the basic operation of the Altimeter 2. Um, come to the Apogee website on our webpage for the Altimeter 2. We do have a lot more data describing how it works. Um, this is something you're going to be really impressed with. Um, it works really good in rockets. Um, I've been flying the heck out of it, and I'm loving it. It's the one Altimeter that you're really going to want. Um, so my name is Tim Van Milligan. Um, our website is www.apogeerockets.com.